folks. I'm Bug from Heritage Salvage, and I am here at the fabulous Poly Class Community Theater, which I endearingly love to refer to as Polly's Place. And I'm here with the executive director of Petaluma People Services, the fabulous Elise Hempel. And I am also here with Rainy Howe, the executive director of Poly Class Foundation Community Matters. And this is sort of a segue from a fellow Canadian, Marshall McLuhan, who 30 years before the internet happened, he predicted what was going to happen. He said it would become a global village. And he wrote a great book about it. And he said, what's going to happen in the global village is you will be able to find out what somebody's doing in Cameroon within seconds of it happening and it will become a global village that we all embrace just like everybody embraced their village but now that internet and the all being pervasive everybody knows what everybody's doing has become sort of divisive politics toxic culture and misinformation and what we would like to do here is begin to take it all back to each community i can't let this slip by that first of all we are here in Polly's place and it was when the community was searching for Polly that we found this community we found Petaluma and I remember driving in and we were looking for houses and thinking what a sweet little town there's little yellow ribbons on all the trees not even knowing what was really going on in this community and that's when I fell in love with the heart that beats in Petaluma, the heart that continues to thrive and continues to do the work. And it was years before I found Petaluma People Services Center, but finding PPSC was one of those things that really changed who I am and how I think about community. And if you've ever gotten an email from me, and I know you have, Bug, because I'm usually <laughs> asking you for something, it says in the bottom, it's all about community. And to me, that is really what I live by. And community is who you're with. So right now, the three of us are community, and we're talking to our wider community. But community is who you're with at the time you are, are with them. And so at Petaluma People Services Center, I'm going to tell you that we now have over 90 programs that we provide in our community and it's all about building self-sufficiency and independence and the ability to continue to thrive where they want to thrive and that's here in Petaluma and so our programs cover a wide variety of things and I'm sure we'll talk about some of those as we go on but to me it's really important to do what you just said recognize that our global community is a little out of control right now and the thing that we can control is our local community. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out how to work together better will then expand our ability to work with other communities. And then maybe we will get to the world that your, your fellow Canadian referenced in his writings that really brings us all together. Right, and it's like that person walking down the street. If you are so bold to just say, hey, how you doing? Or mm -hmm. good morning. In Petaluma, most people look at you and smile back. Yeah. You know, and so Rainy, I know that you've worked in Tahoe in a bunch of places, but you became executive director of the Poly Class Foundation eight years ago. And tell us your story. So um, I lived in Nevada when Polly was abducted, and my daughter was born the same year as Polly. And the incident struck me so deeply because. My daughter was having a slumber party the same weekend that Polly was having a slumber party. Everything just seemed so identical about it. And um, we, we had a window that didn't quite shut right, and I remember nailing chicken wire to it because that's what I had on hand. So it was such a scary time. Um, but then, as Elise so eloquently stated, it is something that demonstrated the very best of this community. The, the humanity and the love and, and the, the feeling that Polly was one of our own. That, that's how this community reacted to that terrible event. And then 29 years later, this community came together to finally honor her life. And um, I've been the executive director since 2013, which was the 20 year 
remembrance of her disappearance. And her mom contacted me the night before of this memorial event where hundreds of people were coming in candlelight vigil in the true Petaluma community. And she said, Rainy, this is the last time I want this community gathering to remind me how my daughter was taken from me. And at that same time, this theater bearing Polly's name had been shuttered for 20 years. The city owned it. They'd run out of funding. It was falling into the ground. And we decided that next day that we were going to start working with the, with the city and with our community to renovate this. And we were only able to do it because of this community. You know, at a time in our lives where people are not agreeing on anything, you know, this community all agreed that they wanted to see this theater renovated. And it all culminated in about, you know, $1.2 million from children's piggy banks to angel donors and everybody in between, which I'm so glad that this theater has the word community in it. It's the Poly Class Community Theater because it's for all of us. It's for whoever is here. It's for whoever we're with at that time. It's for everybody in the audience, everybody on stage. And, you know, Petaluma, I've lived here for the past 10 years. It's voted the friendliest city in the nation. And I think it's true. This is a very special place. We had excellent coverage from local media, the Argus Courier, KSRO. And this morning, I got an email from the anchor of CBS News national you know, syndication that they wanted to come and do an interview. And we declined because, first of all, they're tardy to the party. And second of all, this isn't about them. This is about this community and our local media did such an excellent job covering it we didn't really want to leave it open to some national interpretation it was a really good decision i didn't really have to struggle good with for it you. i want to stay <laughs> in our community the last time touching on the tragic event it's an event that resonates with people kind of like where were you when they landed on the moon? Yeah. And where were you when JFK was shot? Mm -hmm. And where were you when Polly was abducted? Yeah. You know, and here we are inviting the community back. The opening night celebrating all the people that volunteered and donated and everything was a true visage of what this stage is about. We purposely had seven different performers from seven different groups so that everyone had about 10 minutes, which made the audience this cross-pollination, right? The parallel that I draw between this theater and the work at Petaluma People Services, your agency is an umbrella for all of these things that make our community better, and I can't thank you enough. So what it really is about is our community making sure and taking care of people in our community so we can hold them up and get them on the right path. Um, recently, you know, the launch of our Guaranteed Basic Income Program, which, you know, a lot of people think, wait, you're just gonna give them money? What are they gonna do with it, buy drugs? Well, I've spent most of my time talking with these mothers and have spent most of their time talking with these mothers. They need it for childcare. They need it for food. They need it for transportation. And all of those things, that extra $500 a month is gonna allow them to take a job that they would never have been able to take because now they know Know they can cover the cost of childcare or go back to school because they now know they can have reliable transportation to get to school. So those are the things that we see and we watch the change and the evolution of the individuals that we work with and I will guarantee you that they will be back but most of the time they're back to volunteer. And again, that goes back to that whole circle of who we are in Petaluma. If you need help, you, you come and get it. If you want to provide the help, you show up and mm -hmm. do that. And that's how it is. And you know, 
I, I'm going to tell you, the last two years, of course, we never expected where we were. And right. we never expected how things were going to be. And with Bug's help, we were able to build a whole awareness campaign about our home delivered meals. Before the pandemic, we were doing 3,000 meals a day. We're oh doing 10,000 meals. Oh my gosh. And we are feeding people in our community every day that we didn't even know were hungry until the pandemic sh shined the light on the fact that they were hungry and they didn't know where to go and ask for help. And so that continued growth, that continued shining the light on things is how we become better at what we do in our community and understanding the gaps in services. You know, I'm, uh, you know when I look down my, my looking glass of what the next thing is that I think you're probably going to hear me screaming about is, is we have so many seniors and our fastest growing population in Petaluma are those of us who are 60 and older who are at risk of losing their housing. And if we don't do something as a community and if we don't figure out the solutions, we are going to have not only the, the 300 people that we already have unhoused in our community, but we're going to have thousands of seniors sleeping in their cars or in a mobile home or in the back of a, a, a camper because they've lost their ability to live in their home. And that's gonna be the next phase of what we have to do. And at PPSC, we'll lead the charge, but we know that the whole community will charge with us. In fact, we're doing something for the Veterans Parade and we thought it would be very cool to ask our community to do cards, kids to create cards that say thank you for your service that we're gonna hand out to the veterans along the parade route. And I suspected, you know, we would have like 100, 200. Well, you can barely get in my office because there's so many cards to hand out to the veterans at <laughs> the parade. So cool. This town shows up. Yeah. This town is a model at how community should work and does work. And I know it's so difficult for a lot of people to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be the most difficult bridge. At one point, I remember I asked Kratz if there was any people, Committee on the Shelterless, if there was any people that wanted some part-time work before Christmas because we were going to do a Christmas show at the Petaluma Library and Museum with the amazing Susan Villa, who was executive director then. Um, and seven people came up to work. The shortest one was half an hour, <laughs> but the longest one was Scotty. And he stayed, and then he stayed, and then he stayed. And three months later, he's still working for us. And he's great, and he loves what he's doing. And he asked me if I could help him get his kid back. And I went to court with him oh, and helped wow. him get his kid back. And at one point, Sergeant Ken Savano at that, maybe it was Lieutenant Ken Savano at that point, came up because he'd bought a refractory table from us. And he said, Bug, I don't have a truck big enough to take this to my house. Can I borrow the box truck? And I said, yeah. I said, you want Scotty to go along and help you? And he said, oh, I'd love that. And you know, and the chief, uh, the lieutenant's there in his uniform. And Scotty says, can I ride in the front? <laughs> 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 and ever since then, every year, and he's still working and still happy with his kid, and he's playing music, and he works for the Sonoma Marin Fairgrounds, and wow. every, before every Christmas, he comes by with a six pack of beer for me and says, thank you. Oh, nice. And there you go, you know, yeah. and that one success, you know, and Rainey, you, you have that amazing task of, all of a sudden galvanizing the troops and putting out um, lost or kidnapped or looking for missing posters. That's got to be the hardest part of your job. Well, I mean, candidly, I have to credit um, Cindy and Kathy and our response department. They're the ones who take those calls from the family. I'm, you've seen downstairs, I'm right around the corner and just an earshot away. Um, and my role is really to raise the, raise funds so that they can do what they do. So I can't take credit for what they do. But um, I think one of the most important programs that we have is just holding the hands of, 
of families whose child is missing. And you know, you started this conversation about the internet, and I have to say that it's been such a double-edged sword because 85% of our runaway cases are actually kids that were lured online by adult predators. You know, we and and we're a national organization. We take cases locally. We just we had a case in Katadi and Rohnert Park recently, and luckily they were resolved quickly. They were young girls, 15, 16 years old, um, with men that were much older. This community cares, and um, this nation cares. You know, it's like every every child matters. Every child. We give the same attention to you know, a very poor and socially challenged family as we do, a middle class family who never thought that this would happen to them, you know. It's not all marginalized families that this happens to. So it's, it, it's kind of its own community too, in the sense that these are families who have a lot in common and not for any reason that, that you want to have in common with anybody. But we've been around, next year it'll be our 30th year, and we've helped over 10,000 families nationally. And you know, we exist because of Petaluma. We exist because of what Elise was talking about, the community showing up for Polly. If she'd been abducted from another community, this foundation would probably not exist because yeah, it's the or, way that or we a big showed city, up. You exactly. know, you know, it's like community yeah. matters is embedded in this community. And one of the things I love about where we are is you ask for help, how many volunteers step up in this right. city? And the fact, like you were saying, all of a sudden you've got volunteers from every walk of life and 25% of them happen to have been through your program Absolutely. first and then they yeah. came back around to help. Absolutely. That yeah. is like joyous. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. It yeah. is It is full circle and we see it every day. And we, we see it in a lot of different ways too. Um, you know, there are people who pick up food at the food pantry and they bring half of it in to our office so that somebody coming into our office can take food home with them. They don't have to do that. We can get food, we could put mm -hmm. food out, but it's part of their way to give back. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, it's those types of things that happen. And I also think another thing that resonates with me when we talk about community and, and the press release is going out as soon as I hit send, but, um, Two years ago, during COVID, Christmas Cheer, which is an organization that started in 1946 in Petaluma to make sure families had toys to give their kids. They came to us because all of a sudden they had to transition and they had to use the internet to get donations and the internet to get connected to kids because we were all locked into our homes. So Christmas Cheer now, this year, is becoming a program of Petaluma People Services Center because the group of volunteers that have been running it for so long no longer have the capacity to do that. And the fact that we have an organization like PPSC, which I didn't start, you know, I inherited it 18 years ago, but the fact that we had the agency that is able to say to a variety of different little small nonprofits, yes, come be part of us. Come allow your staff to get insurance. Mentor me, you know, when they I became a program of us, yes. the, I, I was shocked to realize they didn't have health benefits and had to, didn't get paid during the summer. I'm like, okay, that's stopping here. That's over. These things matter mm -hmm. and community matters. And you know what? The Mentor Me staff, when we at PPSC need something that's kind of over and beyond our scope, they're the first ones to show up and say, how can we help? So this is, again, to your point, our community is who we're with and our community can expand and, and get tighter when it needs to and expand again to figure out what we in our community need. Yeah. So you two fabulous humans, before I let you go, let us make sure that we let our audience know how to find you, how they can help, how they can join your community, which is our community. But in the bigger picture of things, we always need some kind of address. Elise, please. So we would love to have anybody reach out to us, whether you need help or you want to help. Petaluma People Services, PPSC 
seriously, you get me nine times out of 10 on the phone, or you can email us. And if you go to our website, which is www.petalumapeople.org, there's all different kinds of email addresses. They all come to me. So you're gonna get me, no <laughs> matter what you do. <laughs> and Rainy? So the best way to reach us is at 707-769-1334. And we're in the office, we're a 24-7 organization. So you're gonna get us or, your vo or our voicemail. We'll call you right back. And you can also go to the website, which is polyclasstheater.org. And it can link itself also to the foundation. So if you just remember polyclasstheater.org, then uh, you can find the Polyclass Foundation as well as theater information. Thank you. And if not, just call Mr. Finney. <laughs> Finney. And because he is actually running the whole show. I am so sorry. That is that fabulous. So wiggly. Thank you for showing up, Mr. Finney. You're the best. <laughs> this is too tall for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. Ah, yes. Okay. Yay, Yay, my favorite part. My hug. Mm -hmm. See, I had nine brothers and sisters, so when you came to the deacon's house, everybody would be like, okay, get ready. You're going to get hugged to death.